All right, please remain standing for our national anthem. Good evening. I am John Drisco, Principal of Trape Academy, and on behalf of the school committee, the administration, and the faculty and staff of Trape Academy, I'm honored to welcome you to the commencement exercises for the class of 2019. I want to specifically introduce those who are joining me on the stage this evening and ask that you hold your applause until the end. First of all, I think you've already met the president of the class, Rachel Jones, Mr. Polino, class advisor and health teacher. Mrs. Agnes Bowen, our commencement speaker. Mr. Waddell, superintendent of schools. Mrs. Dow, chairperson of the school committee. And Mr. Lamont and Officer Durgan, representing the Trape Academy trustees. I must also take a moment to thank those mostly responsible for these commencement exercises. First and foremost, thank you to the dedicated work of the faculty and staff of Trape Academy. <laughs> to class advisors Mr. Polino and Ms. Gagner, and to Mr. Westcott for the gift of music. He's over there now. Finally, I would be remiss not to thank two women who are largely responsible for this evening's event. They will both be retiring from the Kittery School District at the end of June. Ms. Su Mrs. Susan Martin and Mrs. Kathy Schmiegel have helped and supported thousands of students 
over a combined 60 years of service. Mrs. Martin and Mrs. Schmiegel, thank you for your care and compassion, and thank you for your dedication and your professionalism. We will all miss you. So please excuse me for just a minute while I um, get a tad more comfortable. If I can figure out where this plugs in, I'll be better. There it is. There. That's better. I find it much easier to concentrate with music in my ears. In fact, I've cultivated an ability to read, take assessments, and socialize with my friends fully connected to the sound of music. The hills of my brain are alive with the sound of music. I would go so far as to say the reality of my existence is enhanced two or threefold by being plugged in. To add to that reality, I always respond immediately to those who text, Instagram, or Snapchat so if I stop in the middle, please excuse me. <laughs> don't get any ideas. My teachers just don't get it. They try to keep the buds off of me, but I have convinced them that I am at my learning peak when I'm plugged in. You all understand, don't you? Some of the best times I've had at Trape have come in the lunchroom, sitting around the circular table with my friends, each of us looking at our phones, talking to each other while we consume and share the social media meme of the moment. It brings a vibrancy and authenticity to our lives. I'm taking a selfie just to catch the authenticity of this moment. <laughs> Gotta take two, one from, one from, one from either side. Whoop, 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 there you go, there, whoop, where are you? There you go. Walking down the hall plugged in is a must. This way I don't have to answer pe to people I don't want to talk with because either I don't want to hear them and can ignore them because my earbuds are in or, better yet, I literally can't hear them and have an honest excuse for not talking with them. Let's face it, some of us have perfected the art of tuning out others. Reality is simply much easier to deal with that way. You see, my music, my social media life, is the best form of reality. Sure, I may have difficulty carrying on a conversation without the spark and fuel of my social media input, but I don't have to deal with difficult conversations because I can speak in a text and ignore the response. Let's face it, human interaction is moving headlong into a virtual reality where we can be anonymous and unaccountable, and it feels great. There's something very freeing about it all. We can imbibe in our baser instincts, which is kind of a powerful feeling, no? No. We are social beings. Though technology has its gifts, it has the tendency to take us away from our need to be with others. Not be, not be with others in virtual reality, but actually be with others. Look them in the eyes and converse. Talk with others. Ask about their lives and their thinking. Share the triumphs and, sadly, the tragedies. When the phone is in the pocket and buzzes, it takes us away from whatever we are doing. And when we are with others, the buzz takes us away from being with them. I once asked a Buddhist what a meditation gives him, and he said, it makes ice cream taste better. Yeah, I, I laughed too, there's no, no question. I said, how, how, how does that work? 
And he explained, it's actually relatively simple because you come home after a long day, you go to the refrigerator and open the freezer and get your favorite ice cream, you put it in the bowl, you sit down with your spoon and you look at it and you go, this is gonna be great. And you take a bite and you say to yourself, yes, this is great. And you are really enjoying that ice cream. And then someone comes in the room and slams the door. Oop. And then you go back to your ice cream. And it takes a couple of, of, of scoops to uh, taste it better. And then a train goes by. And again, it takes a couple of bites to have the ice cream taste better. The constant interruption of technology can make it even harder to make ice cream taste better. It takes us further away from really being with others because we're always being interrupted by the buzz and lights of that phone. Imagine for a moment extended time without the interruption of technology. So imagine really enjoying the taste of your favorite ice cream. Imagine truly experiencing the burst of a sunrise or the beauty of a sunset. Most importantly, imagine enjoying uninterrupted time with your family and friends and loved ones. I challenge you for 24 hours to unplug and live in the moment. I've actually asked some of you if you could do it for a day, to go without your phone for a day. And you said that you probably, no, you couldn't possibly survive. Well, I confidently say that in fact, you would survive. During that time, relish your relationships with others and tend to them like a garden needs tending. You might find your life will be much more fulfilling because of it. Oh. And one more thing, I have genuinely enjoyed being with all of you during this week leading up to your graduation. Congratulations to you all. Thank you. All right, so it is my honor to introduce our commencement speaker. She's someone who's instilled some in some pretty important life skills in us, like how to read and write cursive, memorize the preposition song, and how to handle and meet expectations. I'm so honored to introduce the woman who pushed us to produce our best work and had faith in us the whole time, Mrs. Agnes Bowen. I begin, for those of you who don't know me, um, you might not understand everything I say. I speak a foreign language. It's called Bronx. I'll do my best to limit it. So just, just a heads up. First of all, good evening and greetings to all of you, Mr. Wardell, Mr. Driscoll, and you, the Trape Academy graduating class of 2019. Thank you for inviting me to share this special celebration with you and your families. It is a good evening. You were my last sixth grade class before I retired, and since then, I have followed you through team pictures in the newspapers, announcements for all state selectees, um, for band, and for word of mouth. Periodically, I have substituted in this school, and you have stopped by to say hello to me, and I have appreciated that greatly. Some of you are new to this class, since I had them, and you too have made an important imprint on them. I'm very sorry I never had the opportunity to meet you. You also missed the rules that I made for writing a rough draft. <laughs> This is important as I hounded my students about it. And since I had to write this speech, well, I felt I should follow my own rules too. So here goes, my dear students. It is a minimum of four rough draft pages long. I used only one side of the paper and I skipped every other line. I put X's on every other line to remind me not to do it. <laughs> Therefore, I could do my edit above the words, and I used the back for revision. 
Then I read it over slowly, out loud. I pointed to every word as I went along to check for spelling and continuity. And I must say, it was quite annoying. <laughs> but I'm going to stick to it. Having gotten that out of the way, thank you again for having me here. I am truly honored and shocked. There's a reason for the word shocked. You see, I was never supposed to stand at a podium speaking at the 2019 Trape Academy commencement celebration, was I, or was I ever expected to have you as my students? I will explain. When I was in elementary school, I had a very hard time learning to read. I was in the reading resource room and struggled with that whole concept of reading. Finally, in sixth grade, it all came to a head and I was retained. It was hard and embarrassing, but I have to say it was quite a gift. I was painfully shy and getting nowhere. This new year opened up a new beginning for me. Many people were on my side and got me started. But this academic image of me lasted, and when it came time to selecting high school classes, it was decided that I wasn't college material, and I was put in the secretarial strand. I took shorthand, typing, bookkeeping, business law, and other high school classes, but no algebra, no science, and no other classes that would get me ready for college. I don't regret this academic line, as I have fared well because of the knowledge that it gave me. It wasn't until April of my senior year, as conversations about work after graduation started me thinking about what I wanted to do and what I didn't want to do. What I wanted to do wasn't too clear, but what I didn't want to do was getting very clear. I sat down with my parents and I told them I wanted to go to college. It wasn't something that I had spoken about. It wasn't something that was spoken about in their families and it wasn't something that was spoken about in my family, and money was tight. I had a job from when I was 14 and had a little savings account going, so I took a leap of faith, and someone in admissions at Rockland Community College saw something in me, and I was accepted. It opened a world, and as they say, the rest is history. So why do I tell you the story about my early education? I learned two very important things from it. One, don't give up. Life is hard, so work your way through it. I had a lot of people supporting me. Look around for help when you need it, and also make sure you're the help for somebody else. You will remember, maybe, that I loved picture books. Two in particular, The Little Engine That Could and The Little Red Hen, always struck a nerve with me. I loved Little Blue, that heroic little engine in that story that got the presents over the mountain to the good little boys and girls on the other side. He never gave up on his mission, and he stayed focused and strong. He had passengers supporting him all the way. When times are hard, you need to be Little Blue. You need to not give up. I know you too can accomplish great things and push through during hard times. Sometimes when you have to do a job and you would like to help and can't find it, then you need to be the little red hen. She wished help, but no one would lend a hand planting her seeds to grow her wheat for her bread. After working tirelessly though, she too succeeded and was proud of her accomplishments. At times, you may need to be that little red hen, working alone, wishing for help when there's none, but still accomplishing great things. It's there, it's inside each one of you. The second thing that I learned from my earlier educational experience was not to be afraid to change directions. I don't mean to do this haphazardly, but if you feel that you aren't doing what you're supposed to do, then think about it and decide what is it that you really want and how are you going to get there? Whether you are going to college or starting a new job or continuing on in one that you had, 
Don't give up when times are hard. But if it's not right, don't be afraid to thoughtfully change directions. There are teachers, IT people, a dental hygienist, a police officer, a biologist, a stagehand on Broadway's Hamilton, pilots, and lots of moms and dads in my immediate family. Not all went to college. All are successful. All worked hard after they left their seats in their high school graduation. Won't you join them? I'd like to share a final thought with you about something my father used to tell his five daughters. Life is a banquet table, and the courses that are served fall into three categories. Happy times, challenging times, and sad times. I wish you a life filled with mostly happy times. Savor and enjoy them to the fullest when they are served. When challenging times come along, my wish for you is that you will dig deep down inside yourself and the, find the inner strength and fortitude to what over, excuse me, and fortitude to overcome what seems impossible at the time. And finally, when the sad times come, as they surely will, I wish you to be surrounded by a loving family and friends to lift you up and walk with you. God bless you. I love you. I'm proud of you. Congratulations. Job well done. I am pleased to introduce the valedictorian of the class of 2019, Isabel Woolicott. Good evening, esteemed faculty, dearest families, community members, trustees, friends, and especially soon-to-be graduates. Tonight, the class of 2019 is seated before you, anxiously awaiting diplomas that will launch us into our new lives, but we haven't gotten here alone. I know I sure as hell didn't. I would be remiss if I didn't first recognize my remarkable family, including my brother, my best friend. They have supported me, quite literally, from day one, and I love them endlessly. My teachers and administrators, who have stood by my crazy ideas all these years and helped make them a reality. And the Kittery community, this tight-knit group set against breathtaking scenery that has given me an amazing place to call home. The sticky sweet pine sap, ocean breezes, thundering blizzards, and brilliant sunsets, enjoyed from within the warm embrace of loved ones, has been an incredible way for all, to ready all of us for our departure into the outside world. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for everything that all, have you, that all of you have done to get myself and my classmates to where we are today. Tonight, graduates, my goal is not to speak at you, but with you. I'm not standing up here with the intention of throwing platitudes and bookish quotes at you only for them to be forgotten as soon as those caps are tossed. Well, hold on, I lied. I, I mean, I misspoke. <laughs> Maybe just a few, I can't help it. Regardless, I'm here for the purpose of reminiscing on a collective experience and sharing it with those who are close enough to us to have a seat in this room. After four years of high school, and for some of us, more than 12 years of pedagogic struggle together, there are countless memories between us. There have been tears and smiles triumphs and tragedies. We've been through it all, and now here we are in gowns and on center stage. But for what? Have we gone through the motions just to get that coveted exit paper, or have we made an impact along the way? And what will we make out of all we have done? Kurt Vonnegut said, true terror is to wake up one morning and discover that your high school class is running the country. 
<laughs> that may have been his nightmare, but for me, that's a dream. To open up the paper, wait, I mean scroll through the news app, in a few years' time and see this class not only out in the world, but leaving our mark on it, would make for a wonderful morning served with a steaming cup of get-to-work coffee. My class running the country. It may seem like a crazy fantasy, but it is all of us I'm talking about, so why not? Each and every one of us has something to say, something we believe in, and we deserve to have our voices heard. Shout it from the rooftops, and don't just get pushed along with change, be the change. Our world is ripe with challenges, problems that are just waiting to be solved, and it is not only our time to piece together a new future, but our responsibility. We are graduating in a time where climate change will be irreversible in just 12 to 11 to 12 short years. Universal social justice is far from being achieved and students aren't safe in schools. It's time to act. Many people think that the little guy, the individual, has no place in changing the world and this is an all too pervasive trope. The thing is, you don't have to be sitting on the hill making policies to have an impact. You don't even have to march in protest or, you know, sign a petition to create change. Make art, play music that transcends, shape sculptures that speak, write plays that connect and design fashion that bridges borders, make food that inspires and unites, compile code that takes us to new frontiers, build not only houses, but homes, and travel until you can't tell the difference between yourself and your neighbor. Work for your community, plant trees and bring new life. While you're at it, remember to take your work seriously, but not yourself too seriously. Decorate your grad caps, throw jokes into a formal speech, and maybe, if you are doing it just right, laugh so hard during a presentation that you pee yourself. You know who you are. <laughs> Have fun and move mountains while you're at it. There is so much that we have to offer this world, and our actions, even the smallest ones, are what will truly put us in power when they're carried out with intent. Elaborate titles and vast gestures are not what the world needs. The world needs people who are passionate, who are dedicated, and who are willing to inspire while continuing to learn. Whether moving on to a career path, pursuing another diploma, or still figuring things out, we have everything inside needed to ignite our own sparks and those of others. It might sound daunting, impossible even, but take it from your family here at Trape Academy. You have already had an influence. This week, I took some time to investigate what our class would be remembered for, the impacts we have made, and who better to ask than the teachers who watched us grow from mere freshmen to imposing seniors. To synthesize, paraphrase, and quote their words, the class of 2019 is bold. They're not afraid to take chances, to get involved, and to work towards the changes that they want to see. They served on planning and hiring committees, spoke at and served on the school board, and are starting to consciously vote. They have been, and continue to be, civically-minded individuals who are interested in the world around them. The class of 2019 has stood together with the school to support causes they believe in, such as during the powerful student walkout for Parkland in 2018, holding hands in a silent, snowy morning, and then walking out again a year later to protest climate change and climate inaction. They fostered meaningful connections with Kittery's adult seniors in Sages and Seekers, fundraised to end 68 hours of hunger to support local wildlife, and even made plans to ban plastic bags. They helped found Trape's first civil rights team, beautified the school, and may have had the highest rate of involvement in extra extracurriculars seen in a long time. They led athletic and scholastic teams to new victories, and their capstone projects didn't only serve their grades, but the greater community, leaving lasting lessons and experiences behind for all to enjoy. As Mrs. Gagner said, the class of 2019 may be tiny, but they certainly are mighty in spirit, heart, and getting what they want done. My room, no, it really was not the senior lounge, has been made better because of the guidance and sense of fun this class gave the younger students. You see, the school community is better off because we've all been a part of it. 
The people in this room are different than who they once were in a time without you, without us. Not only have we all been students, but we have been volunteers, captains, presidents, mentors, teammates, leaders, givers, siblings, friends, and even teachers ourselves. We have learned invaluable lessons about life along our journey to this very moment, and sure, some academic lessons too, that we can now take with us once we walk out those doors in order to continue the work we have started. I know that with our passions and actions in hand, we have the universe at our fingertips, ripe for change. Mahatma Gandhi said, in a gentle way, you can shake the world. And to the class who rocked the bus and barely made it to freshman year, I think we are all well on our way. Congratulations, class of 2019. Our school community is blessed with local organizations and other benefactors who have established scholarships to support the post-secondary endeavors of the students of TRAPE Academy. This year's local scholarship awards, including the TRAPE Academy trustee scholarships that Mr. Lamont and Officer Durgan will be presenting, exceeds $199,000. Our seniors will use these funds to supplement financial awards from their schools, savings, and college loans in order to continue their education in the fall. I want to thank everyone in Kittery and Kittery Point for recognizing the value of investing in education. I will invite five seniors at a time to join me on the stage for the award presentations. Thank you for holding your applause until all five students have been named. So please join me on the stage. Avery Yurick, Ryan Perkins, Lauren Welch, Aidan McLeod, and Kylie Pinkham. The William E. Dennett Vocational Scholarship in the amount of $550 is presented to Avery Yurick. The R.W. Trape Academy Sports Boosters Pamela Hoyt Sanborn Scholarship in the amount of $1,500 is presented to Ryan Perkins. The Priscilla Guy Scholarship in the amount of $200. The Kittery Teachers Association Scholarship in the amount of $400. The Hilda Fife Scholarship by the Second Christian Congregational United Church of Christ in the amount of $500, and the Simon Youth Foundation Community Scholarship in the amount of $6,000 is presented to Lauren Welch. The Jeffrey K. Rutherford Memorial Music Scholarship in the amount of $100 is presented to Aidan McLeod. And the Embark, the Embark Scholarship in the amount of $2,000 is presented to Kylie Pinkham. <laughs> Would the following seniors please join me on stage? Liam Reeve, Henry Miller, Julia Roy, Maria Perez, and Madison Andrews. Approximately 11,500 high school seniors from across the United States applied for an Air Force ROTC scholarship. This year, only 22% of the applicants received a scholarship offer. On behalf of Brigadier General Christopher J. Nimai, Commander in the United States Air Force Gene M. Holmes Center for Office, excuse me, Officer Accessions and Citizen Development, congratulations to Liam Reeve who receives the Air Force Reserve Officer Training Corps Scholarship in the amount of $54,000. 
The Robert T. Witten Memorial Scholarship in the amount of $750 is presented to Henry Miller. The Louisa Welton Art Scholarship in the amount of $250 and the Kittery Art Association Marsha Abigail Ryder Scholarship in the amount of $1,000 is presented to Julia Roy. The Women's Fellowship of the First Congregational Church Scholarship in the amount of $1,000, and the Trape Academy Sports Boosters Pamela Hoyt Sanborn Scholarship in the amount of $1,500 is presented to Maria Perez. <laughs> the Kittery Point Fire Association, Evelyn M. Frisbee and Ronald A. Frizzle Scholarship in the amount of $500, and the Kittery Lions Club Lila Smith Scholarship in the amount of $1,000 is presented to Madison Andrews. <laughs> Would the following seniors please come to the stage? The Kittery, sorry. I was too excited to get going. Rachel Jones, Wyatt Scott, Lily Kemp, Mohammed Hassan Sheikh and Karina Cogs Cogswell. <laughs> the Kittery Educational Scholarship in the amount of $850,000, excuse me, $850,000. It has been a long night, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate your understanding. In the amount of $850,000, and on behalf of the Maine Educational Services Foundation, I'm pleased to announce that Rachel Jones has been selected out of 487 applicants to receive the Richard H. Pierce Memorial Scholarship. Rachel is one of 10 award recipients who will receive a $5,000 scholarship, which can be renewed for up to four years. The Kittery Fire Station Association and the James Melhorn Memorial Scholarship in the amount of $500 is presented to Wyatt Scott. The Alpha Delta Kappa International Honorary Sorority of Women Educators Scholarship in the amount of $500. The Rotary Club of Kittery in the amount of $800. The Kittery Educational Scholarship in the amount of $850 the John F. Smith First Amendment Scholarship in the amount of $1,000, and the York County Council of Maine Association of Realtors Scholarship in the amount of $2,500, and the George J. Mitchell Scholarship in the amount of $10,000 is presented to Lily Kemp. The Kittery Association excuse me, the Kittery Education Scholarship in the amount of $850, and the Naval Lodge No. 184 S.H. Wells Moulton Scholarship in the amount of $1,000 is presented to Muhammad Hassan Sheikh. <laughs> the Kennebunk Savings Bank Foundation Scholarship in the amount of $1,000 is presented to Karina Cogswell. Would the following six seniors come to the stage? Tiana Webster, Kayla Roth, Jennifer Clifford, Isabel Woolicott, the Kittery Lion, excuse me, Jacob Farnham, and Elizabeth Young. The Kittery Educational Scholarship in the amount of $850, the Kittery Art Association, Marsha Ryder, Abigail Ryder Scholarship in the amount of $1,000, and the Tyler Grand Mason Melmac Scholarship in the amount of $2,000 is presented to Tiana Webster. <laughs> the Embark Scholarship in the amount of $2,000 is presented to Kayla Roth.
The Rotary Club of Kittery Scholarship in the amount of $800 is presented to Jennifer Clifford. The Rotary Club of Kittery in the amount of $800, the Kittery Educational Scholarship in the amount of $850, and the Kittery Art Association Marsha Abigail Ryder Scholarship in the amount of $1,000 is presented to Isabel Woolacott. The Kittery Lions Club Linda Buckinger Scholarship in the amount of $1,000 is presented to Jacob Farnham. And the Kittery Police Benevolent Association Scholarship in the amount of $500 is presented to Elizabeth Young. Would the following students please come to the stage? Ryan Perkins, Lily Kemp, Liam Reeve, and Thomas Brewer. Jackson L. Connell was the football coach at Trape Academy and Dartmouth College during the 1950s. Each year, the Jackson L. Connell Athletic Award is presented to the outstanding male athlete in the graduating class. This year, the recipient is Ryan Perkins. Norma Sis Morrow was a longtime coach of basketball and softball at Trape at the same time as Jack Connell. She retired in 1975 after a long and distinguished career at Trape. The Norma Sis Morrow Athletic Award is presented annually to the outstanding female athlete in the graduating class. And this year's recipient of that award is presented to Lily Kemp. Leo Smith was a teacher and a coach from 1966 to 1980. The Leo M. Smith Memorial Award, given to the student who exemplifies sportsmanship, scholarship, and leadership, is presented to Liam Reeve. <laughs> Maria Barth was a long-term devoted school board member. This award is given to a student who demonstrates outstanding dedication dependability, and quiet compassion for their class. The Maria Barth Award is presented to Thomas Brewer. I am honored to introduce Major General Doug Farnham, Maine's Adjutant General, representing the United States Air Force Academy. Good evening. Uh, tonight, uh, like we said, I am here to represent the United States Air Force Academy and pre present Tristan Denholm an appointment to the United States Air Force Academy. So why don't you come on up, Tristan? The Academy that is in Colorado Springs, Colorado, is an equivalent to a four-year, full-ride scholarship to a top-tier university. For those of you who are not familiar with the admission process and requirements for the Air Force Academy, please let me share. Every candidate to the Academy must apply and complete a rigorous admissions process focused on academics, athletics, fitness, leadership, and service. Every candidate must secure a congressional nomination. This year, over 10,000 applicants competed for the 1,150 appointments to this year's class. During four years at the Air Force Academy, cadets have the opportunity to participate in many leadership development programs, including flying aircraft, free fall parachuting, and participating in various military training programs. They pursue a major of their choice in one of 27 academic disciplines. In addition, they study subjects dealing with Air Force history, military affairs, leadership, and management. While a cadet, the Air Force will pay complete tuition, room board, and provide a, month, a monthly basic pay. When Tristan graduates from the Air Force Academy, he will earn a Bachelor of Science degree and be commissioned a second lieutenant 
in the United States Air Force. Approximately half of each graduating class will go on to Air Force pilot training, and many others will have the opportunity to earn advanced degrees. But all graduates will eventually be working in one of many officer career fields in the world's greatest air, space, and cyber force. I'm very proud of Tristan, and it is a great honor for me to recognize the years of hard work that have earned Tristan Denholm an appointment to the USAFA class of 2023. I am pleased to invite Mr. Kenneth Lamont and Officer Durgan to present the Trape Trustees Scholarships and Awards. Good evening. I would like to take this opportunity to recognize my fellow Trape Trustees in attendance, Jay Durgan and Tammy Hoyt Melcher, and also someone very dear to me, the Trape Trust Coordinator, Gail Lamont. Each year, the trustees of Robert W. Trape Trust honor the vision and wishes of Robert W. Trape's will by presenting awards and scholarships to the graduating seniors. Robert W. Trape is considered the town's greatest benefactor of all of Kittery's native men. He was born in 1800 in Kittery on a point of land opposite the Navy Yard. No, I did not know him. He had he attended the common schools of Kittery and completed a limited education in a private school. He became very successful dry goods businessman. He was Sam Walton before Sam Walton. Starting with no capital except his own energy, his ingenuity, skill, and attention to business, he prospered. He saw there was a lack of good education. The people were mostly illiterate or practically so possessing a strong public sentiment and great regard for the town of his birth, he left his entire estate upon his passing in 1864 for the establishment of a high school for Kittery. His gift to the Academy of Kittery has resulted in the greatest single gift to this community. Each year, the trustees present watches to students who have demonstrated the qualities of citizenship, scholarship, and service during their years at Trape. This year, the Trape Trustee Watches are presented to Lily Kemp and Liam Reeve. Walsh is also presented in the memory of Dr. Paul Taylor, a longtime president of the Trape Trustees, tireless worker for our schools, and a local pediatrician who practiced medicine in Kittery for 50 plus years. Dr. Taylor took particular interest in the student who worked hard, persevered under difficult circumstances, and set the proper example for classmates. This year's Dr. Paul Taylor Watch is awarded to Corinne Cogswell. At this time, it is the honor of the Trape Trustees to present the following scholarships that are awarded to recognize the dedication of our schools, many generous benefactors. Will David Jutris, Elena Peralt, Harper Shea, and Abigail Bull please join us on stage? The Dr. Paul Taylor and Robert W. Trape Scholarship and the amount of $3,000 is awarded to David Jutris. <laughs> Richard Discharge was a Trip Academy graduate. He was employed at the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard as an engineer and perished along with 128 other brave men while on sea trials on the USS Thresher on April 10th. 1963. The, the Richard Discharge and Robert W. Trape Scholarship in the amount of $3,000 is awarded to Elena Peral.
Arlene Mary Lamont came to Kittery from Waltham, Massachusetts, a graduate of Boston University to teach business subjects at Trape. Her entire teaching career here at Trape was here at Trape Academy. The scholarship was created by her husband, Harrison E. Lamont, a Trape graduate to recognize her strong commitment to education and the students of this community. The Arling Maring Lamont and Robert W. Trape Scholarship in the amount of $3,000 is awarded to Hopper Shea. George Bolter was the treasurer of the town, longtime treasurer of the Trape Trustees, and was in the coal business. Mr. Raymond Hobbs was the vice president of the class of 1915 and a Trape Trustee. Mrs. Pauline Morrison was a friend of the school, a 1917 graduate of Trape Academy, lifelong Kittery resident. Her father started the first known general store in Kittery. Her granddaughter is a member of the Trape faculty, Penny Draca. The Boulder, Hobbs, Morrison, and Robert W. Trape Trust Scholarship in the amount of $3,000, excuse me, $3,000 is awarded to Abigail Bull. <laughs> the following students, Ryan Perkins, Julia Roy, Lily Kemp, and Aidan McLeod, please join us. Constitutional Aid Society of Kittery was a nonprofit corporation duly organized in Kittery in 1900 for the purposes of carrying out charitable, charitable goals. The Constitutional Aid Society turned over their scholarship in 1985 to the Trape Trustees to manage and present each year award to a deserving graduating senior. The Constitutional Aid Society scholarship in the amount of $3,000 is awarded to Ryan Perkins. Jethro H. Sweat served in the Civil War, worked at the Porcelain Naval Shipyard, was a local merchant, and was one of the first Trape trustees. In 1939, he contributed 80% of the cost of the construction of Sweat Gymnasium, which is now the library. The Jethro H. Sweat Trustee Scholarship in the amount of $3,000 is awarded to Julia Roy. Harry W. Cook was a local dairy farmer in North Kittery who had a local milk route. In 1950, from some his trust contributed to the construction of the Cook Building. He served the town as both the Trape trustee and Kittery school board member. The Harry W. Cook Scholarship in the amount of $3,000 is awarded to Lily Kemp. Robbie W. The Robert W. Trape Trust Scholarship in the amount of $3,000 is awarded to Aidan McLeod. <laughs> Rachel Jones, Leah Heron, Jennifer Clifford, Lauren Welch, please join us. <laughs> Ms. Florence L. McCashin was a 1949 Graduate of Trape Academy, a descendant of a multi-generational Kittery Point family. She worked at the Kittery Town Hall for a short time prior to enlisting in the U.S. Navy. During her distinguished career, she was promoted seven times. She has the distinction of being the only WAVE Senior Chief Communications Technician in the entire Navy at the time of her promotion. Even though she never returned to Kittery, she never forgot her alma mater. Upon her passing in 2013, she bequeathed a sum of money to establish a scholarship for a deserving graduate of this institution. The Florence L. McCashin Scholarship in the amount of $3,000 is awarded to Rachel Jones. <laughs> Miss Grace Treadwell was born in 1876 in Germany, and she lived in Boston and summered on Pepper Road in Kittery Point. Having spent many summers in Kittery Point, she grew to fall in love with Kittery and his children. The Grace W. Treadwell Scholarship in the amount of $1,000 each for the next four years is awarded to Leah Heron and Jennifer Clifford. <laughs> Ornella.
O'Neill Roy devoted his life to teaching science and coaching the students of Trape Academy. I'm one of his students who was fortunate enough to have had him. He was, a proud, he was proud of the approximately 5,000 students he taught throughout his career here at Trape. He participated in several community organizations, including the original Kittery Recreational Committee, the Water Testing Survey Project for the State of Maine, the Board of Directors of the Kittery Land Trust Community Representative on the Porcelain Shipyard Restoration Advisory Board. I'd like to share you with a quote of O'Neill Roy's that is a testament to the man and what was important in his life. When asked later in his life what alternative career he would choose, he responded, even if I would be offered a million dollar salary in any other field, I would choose to teach and coach again. The O'Neill Roy Memorial Scholarship in the amount of $3,000 for the next two years is awarded to Lauren Welch. <laughs> Isabel Willicott, Haven Yetten, Tiana Webster, Thomas Brewer, Liam Reeve. See how good I am at this? They don't even have, I don't have to say, come up. And... <laughs> Lester and Dorothy, Dor Dorothy Avery started and ran a local real estate and insurance business in Kittery. Lester was a trade graduate, served in the military, state representative, a trade trustee, a charter member of the Kittery Chamber of Commerce, and an unknown artist whose work can be seen in local businesses. The Lester A. and Dorothy M. Avery Scholarship in the amount of $3,000 to a male student, a female student, each for two years are awarded to Isabel Woolacott and Haven Yetten. <laughs> the Trape Trustees are honored to award the second year of the Carrie B. Varney Scholarship. Carrie, upon her passing, bequeathed a great deal of money to not only to Trape Academy, to also to many other organizations in town. Carrie was a true native, having been born in Kittery in a 1942 w. Robert W. Trape graduate. In her professional life, she worked many years for the family business, Chesley's Cabins on Route 1, and later at the Porcelain Naval Shipyard. Her entire life was dedicated to and encouraging education. The Kerry B. Viney Scholarship in the amount of $3,000 each for the next two years is awarded to Tiana Webster and Thomas Brewer. <laughs> Dr. Charles Ivan McNall was a World War I aviation veteran. He was a graduate of Tufts Dental School, practicing dentistry for 30 years. His strong belief in education and in this institutional learning was fostered by his wife, Gladys Spinney McNall, a 1913 graduate of Robert W. Trape. The Dr. Charles Ivan McNall Scholarship in the amount of $3,000 for the next four years is awarded to Liam Reeve. The Trape Trustees are honored to have awarded $77,000 in scholarships this year to the Trape Academy Class of 2019. Thank you. Mr. Lamont, Officer Durgan, and all of the Trape Trustees on behalf of the Class of 2019, thank you so very much for your generosity. What does Hamilton say? It's showtime. Mr. Superintendent and Madam Chair, as the principal of Robert W. Trape Academy, I verify that members of the class of 2019 who are seated before you this evening have met all the requirements for graduation as prescribed by the Kittery School District, and therefore I confer upon them a Robert W. Trape Academy diploma.
Karina J.C. Cogswell. Harper Hayden Che. Straight ahead. Tedra Lynn Dion. Andrew S. Lunny. Theodore Francis Driscoll. Isabel Sierra Woolicott. <laughs> Wyatt A. Scott. Tiana Lee Webster. <laughs> David Raymond Jutras. Julia Christina Roy. <laughs> William J. Laster. Elena Marie Peralt. <laughs> Mohammed Hassan Sheikh. Kayla H. Roth. Jared Thomas Child.
Kylie Amelia Pinkham. Madison May Andrews. <laughs> Mateo Tabuso. Maria Nora Perez. Did they really? Brett Jacob Walker. Erica Shea Paris. <laughs> Avery Yurick. Catherine Elizabeth Johnson. <laughs> Henry J. Miller. Alessandro Puzzato. <laughs> Elizabeth Doty Young. Austin Cole Pencho. <laughs> Lily Catherine Kemp. Jalen Nathaniel Lacey. <laughs> Zachary Nathaniel Willette.
Aidan McLeod. Skylar Elaine George. <laughs> Haven Hopley Yetton. Linnea Heron. <laughs> Jacob Farnham. Arno Boutte. <laughs> Thomas Sakayan Brewer. Nathaniel William Lochner. <laughs> Student Council Representative Jennifer Fallon Clifford. Student Council Representative Tristan James Denholm. <laughs> Student Council Representative Ryan Michael Perkins. Class Secretary, Abigail Riley Bull. <laughs> Class Treasurer, Lauren Welch. Class Vice President, Liam Joseph Reeve. Uh, 
and Class President Rachel Elizabeth Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you a graduate. 